First, we're going to go over the boring logistics units. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to go over the full, cool, cool stuff. Which is the glorious wooden battleship. I have developed a bit of lore, but as for right now, I don't care to tell it right now. Although, I guess I could, but this is what I like to call the Phoenix battleship. It is the apex of wooden technology. No, I'm just kidding. My last one was better. All of these three units, the drone, the Franken gumbo, I'm not quite sure of my mad name, and the name, Phoenix Battleship, are all inspired by, well, this one's obvious, the Malau's Wolf from Lathan's Campaign, but all of them are inspired from units from Lathan's Campaign. This is kind of like my own version of Bloodfang. I'm not quite, this is probably the one I'm least happy with, honestly, but... The drone inspired from the cornflakes, obviously, which is one of my probably my favorite FDD starting craft craft. So we're gonna go over the cool thing first. The I was about to say Malaus. Well, Phoenix Battleship. I call it the Phoenix because it symbolizes a rising colony. Because my lore for this faction is that in Interstellar Empire and tried to invade neither, but Scarlet Dawn force managed to destroy considering he's only an expeditionary force, managed to destroy everything but the colony ship. Which the colony ship was severely damaged and crashed on a planet planet. That's just a quick bit of lore. And I'm moving my hand around, even though you can't see my face. Or me. That's very pointless, illogical. So this is the Phoenix Battleship. It has, I forgot the caliber. I have a very good memory, as you can tell. It's 1,500 millimeter cram cannons, which have a reload time of 15.86 seconds, which is pretty good. And then we have these max gauge cram cannons, 2,000, and with a reload time of 22.67 seconds. I cannot speak. Both are copied on the same side, and these provide a decent bit of firepower. 121 as a game says, but the main damage dealer is the 100 millimeter three barrel minigun style turrets I have. They fire at 525.6 RPM. They do use belt fed auto letters. Belt fed auto letters. Sorry. These are kind of the main damage dealers, even though I do love the glorious explosions that come from cram cannons. They're just can provide that consistent damage and do get intercepted quite easily. So these guys are the workhorses of this ship. There is no main cannon like Malau's Law. Instead decided to put a superstructure because of cost and materials. Unlike the Malau's Will, it is not walkable, however, I'm nowhere near as good a builder as Lathland probably won't ever be but this is still pretty good it has quite a bit of layers of wood but i did use some metal in the construction especially on the superstructure because i noticed these turrets detonate a lot when facing its cram cannons so it does use quite a bit of metal probably way more than the malal's will but that's because i'm just not as good an engineer and they have nerfed wood by, I think they nerfed stack art, stacked armor a while ago. So just stacking a bunch of wood isn't as viable. Plus their armor value is really low. But this thing is built basically as a wood cannon. Not a glass cannon, but a wood cannon. It has extreme firepower for about the cost of like a heavy cruiser with 50,000 added materials. At least by my standards. So... It's kind of leaning more on the side of a battle cruiser rather than a true battleship because of its armor, but I'm calling this because, considering the fact this is from the lore I've developed, a stranded colony, by their, by the size, it would be designated as a battleship because it is very large. This is because I needed all the things to fit the firepower, which is the key aspect of the ship. It is designed to obliterate anything and hold up to basically nothing. Except the deep water guard. Next vehicle on our list is a Franken gumbo. I call it the Franken because it's like Frankenstein and the fact that we're basically scrapping these ships together. Don't look very scrapped, but 
the idea is, is that this society is highly militaristic, and so they do keep their ships rather nice and clean, even if they are kind of scrapped together. Is two custom jet engines. It gives it a speed of roughly 65 meters per second. It has a six-barreled 50 millimeter advanced cannon on top, which is... I don't even think it does as much damage as the a single one of these cannons, but, you know... I will just move this up for a second. On the bottom there is, I believe, 1,500, 1,500 millimeter crank cannons firing at 19.05 seconds. Not as damaging as the models will, but considering this is a third of the cost, it does have some metal here. It has about three to four layers of, uh, two to three layers of arm wood armor combined with some metal. And by the way, I forgot to do the Phoenix this armor. It has anywhere from probably three to seven layers of armor stacked with hash spacing somewhere. All of these ships don't have very good hash spacing because most of the Deep Bar Guard doesn't use it. These are the tiny early game workhorses. I just called them drone because I didn't know a better name. If you want to leave a name suggestion, I'm very open to that. As I'm not a great namer. But it has its only arm is 18 sets of MIDI missiles, one frag warhead, AP prediction guidance, fuel tanks, and fins. They go at basically average speed. It has a main propeller set, which it cannot fly without, which is it is kind of exposed by it, but it'd have to alter the ship a lot to actually make it more. Well, how do I put this? Um. I cannot think of words, my brain is gone. I did a British accent for no reason. But, yeah, this is the main propeller. Didn't protect it because I'd have to alter a lot of the ship's structure, and I kind of didn't want to add more cost. Even though it would only be a little bit because it's wood. It also has some smaller sets of propellers that actually doesn't need for moving around, except it can function without one of them. These are. Basically, the only thing about it, it does have some metal armor because I just find it very difficult to make good armor without um, using any metal because of the changes. So now we get on to the more boring units. Also, that does not have advanced cannon on like the cornflake, but you know, this is the cargo helicopter. Call it the hauler because, well, name fits. It's literally. I've, after building that city in the background, I'll go over in a minute. I literally ran out of basically patience. I didn't want to really do any logistics, and we pretty much see the same. Although it doesn't look too bad, it's just very simple. It has two sets of daddy blades powering it. it. Has thrusters providing with a surprisingly high speed of about I think it was 100 or 80. It holds 500,000 resources, which is very impressive. Also, the drone and this are both viable for Ashes of the Empire due to their volume limit, which I have noted. It has a... That's basically all there is. The engine is quite a bit overpowered for the overall weight of the vehicle, but, you know, whatever. It's fast, cheap, very cheap, and rather durable. Well, not durable. I don't know. I feel like I need to say something there, but I didn't. Overall, this is probably the best transport ship I've built, just because it's so cheap and it transports so much. It's also fairly cheap to run. This is a satellite. Not much to say about it. It's a satellite that's wood and horrifyingly ugly because I didn't feel like building a proper satellite. However, this thing took hours. I don't know how many hours, but at least two. Actually, probably three at least. So this thing is very, very... I'm quite proud of it. Now, at first, I didn't think it looked that good, especially the houses. But after a while, I started changing my mind. In my opinion, it's actually kind of cool. I think it's even deserving its own tour. I call it Frontier City because this is basically the colonies, what I like to call downtown. I say the transport ship had a crew of about... 
were passengers of about 5,000 people to establish a settlement, of which only 400 survived, roughly 430. I'm not going to keep up with the exact number, but around 430. I'm just going to say that's how many survived. It was quite a bad crash, and the damage did do quite a bit with hull breaches and stuff during the space battle with the Scarlet Dawn. I talked too much in that. I have some of these beds I made with mimics, which I'm actually kind of proud of. These are the pillows and whatnot. As a stove, it's not very accurate, but you know. It has some chairs. This is what I like to call the refugee home, where it houses a majority of this, at least quite a few of the citizens. I think it contains roughly 60, counting the chairs. 64 citizens can be contained in this, technically. Just nothing really it has some lights. I'm actually rather proud of it. It's simple, but this whole town's simple. Because I'm, this is the defense center, as I like to call it. It's very basic. It has an AI. I cannot use ladders in this game. Someone help me, please. Send help. All right, please work. Nope. Hold on. Technical difficulty. It has a table here, which I originally wanted to include a map of Neater, but I just couldn't find one. And I just didn't know what to do. There was a vehicle that had one, but I can't remember that. If you do, please sit down. I'd love to have a map of Neater here, but this is the Defense Center, as I like to call it. Ministry of Defense, whatever. His mannequin. Because I didn't really feel like making mannequins. Originally, I was going to have some on the beds working, you know, all of that stuff. But I decided to take too much time. Which I have all the time in the world right now because it's spring break, but whatever. So this is the... Yeah, nothing really. It just kind of a lookout. This thing has no defenses. Originally, I was going to have some, but I figured the drones and whatnot would do uh, defend it. It has some cranes I made. They could be made better, but they're simple and small. These contain the repair units that are used for the construction. It has a little storage area here, which I forgot to mention on the other side. I'm probably spending a lot of too much time, which I'll probably sit this in another video. This is the supply storage area, where it contains most of its resources. Over here, I made a smaller area for storage. It has some spinny mines, which I actually really like spinning mines that would be a dangerous military weapon but yeah as an engine back there and some fuel as a vehicle blueprint spawner they kind of just threw in here i could add a slip there to make it nicer which i'll actually do that right now oh and made it a little bit unnecessary but might as well get make it nicer oops We'll need to save this. Uh, no, not the Phoenix. They can put in cities. You know, just pretty standard. I was gonna include some railing, but once again, kind of just spilling off time there. Excuse me. Has a tractor beam. This is the dockyard area, by the way. And where did I put that mine? I think it died. Yeah, no, it died. Unfortunate. Let's try that again. These are the pillar mines. Sorry. Let me... Listening. These are just incredibly basic. They have some material storage, so... Originally, I was going to go for an aesthetic. Loud noise. Plop. But I just, once again, time just didn't feel like it. They're, let me just, yeah, they're just, I just named them pillars due to their kind of tall shape. They harvest at a decent rate and they provide for the glorious city here. Because I want to give FTD just a little bit more feeling, I guess. I want to have proper cities and stuff. Not all of them will be built as a flying fortress build some individual skyscrapers and stuff like with the lightning hoods and all of them but overall I think this is all the units 
here is the drone which I forgot to lift up. It has no advanced cannon, like I said. Because honestly, originally I was going to include it, but I just realized there probably wouldn't be enough room for a good one anyway. Overall, these are the Wooden Legion, as I like to call it. It's very similar to Lathan's name, I think. Actually, maybe the exact same, but. These units will form the basis of our early game campaign. Also, this music might be copyrighted or not, I don't know. Which is why I'm making this. Which is why I'm adding it here, so that way I don't make the same mistake. Because I do love the music in this game. It's a real shame it gets copyrighted. Sometimes. I think it did once. Let's we'll see if that's changed. But overall, a good selection of units. Although I have been disappointed with the Franken and the drone. Just from the durability kind of lacking, which is why I had multiple layers of armor. I haven't managed to get the Phoenix in the campaign yet, though. With all of its glorious firepower. This thing can be the crossbones, and... I didn't never try to get the bulwark, bulwark, bulwark. But I think it can be an Iron Gordon, maybe. Don't quote me on that. I might add some decoys later in the extra defense, but I kind of forgot. 